Good evening and welcome to the Cluck G Cells Homestead. I was so excited to get back to recording videos and visiting with you guys and getting updates out that yesterday I forgot to introduce myself in the homestead and I was like, well, I could take it down and do whatever. I thought, nah, you know what? Doesn't matter. What's important is for us to get back in the habit of sharing content with you guys. Um, we all get in the habit of, um, let me take these off so there's no glare. Uh, we all get in the habit of trying to show the pretty and, you know, make sure the presentation is great and all of these things when the truth is that life is messy. Um, running a homestead or a farm, micro farm, does use whatever terminology that you prefer. It's hard work and it's messy. Um, it's not always pretty. Things don't always go the way that they're supposed to. And I was going back and looking through the content that we created last year and the year before. And I thought to myself, I said, what's the difference or the transitions that I see as the, the content has matured and changed? Well, first of all, the first year's content, I wasn't in it very much because I was showing you things. And... Um, taking you on tours and um, just sharing with you what I was doing, just like if I was talking to a friend or family member. Um, but I was getting complaints from people because I wasn't in the content that I generated. So in the last year when we were working on content, I tried harder, as did um, my husband, to create content that um, had us in it more because apparently folks like that, you know, it's a thing. Um, but what I realized is that it didn't feel as genuine or as authentic to me. And that's part of the reason why I stepped away from it for a little while. Um, I want whenever we open up our home and our lives to share with you our what we're working on, our hopes, our goals, our dreams, our progress. I want that to be an experience where it's just like you're sitting down at my table in my kitchen or my you know, living room or whatever. Um, for example, you won't usually find me with makeup on in these videos. I'm not the kind of person that wears makeup. Um, I never have been. I guess... They keep trying to tell me as I get older than I should, but what do you do? So, yesterday we went through a whole binging episode of going through all of the seeds that we have available, and I spent way more time than I care to admit in the last 24 hours going back through the seeds, making lists, going to different sourcing sites to see what's available. A lot of the things that were my favorites last year are already unavailable through the vendors that I usually use. Um, and I was going to do just a mail call video. And I realized, listen, I need to get in the habit of doing a video every day as an update of one sort or another, whether that is planning, figuring, calculating, scheming, uh, preserving, cooking, uh, weeding, gardening, building, organizing, it, it doesn't matter. So, that being said... I realized that I had neglected a friend, um, a fellow YouTuber and uh, Instagram friend uh, that I have been watching grow and mature over the last couple of years is Kelly Green Acres Farm. Now, they do regenerative agriculture with um, no-till farming, zero waste. Um, Kelly is a wife, a mom. Uh, a farmer and she bakes some of the most delicious bread and she is on a uh, sourdough kick right now and she I think she has an Etsy store if I remember correctly I honestly don't remember she just sent me the link so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you um, I purchased from her through her store some of her sourdough starter so she sent it to me in a package which I have now just cut open um, breakable, so I'm trying to be careful. Um, there we go. And it's just coming in this cute little mason jar. See, it says Kelly Green Acres. 
and it is sourdough starter. And then in a envelope, Miss Kelly sent me instructions, and they look more like a book. <laughs> um, so I might have to study on this for a little bit so that I get it all correct. But she gives you a listing of what all you'll need, what your instructions are, like all the way through. Gives you some tips for taking care of your sourdough starter. And um, also what to do to rehydrate your starter. So I haven't tried to do this in a long, long, long time. Um, we don't eat a lot of bread, but lately we've been eating a little bit more. And if we're going to be good at homesteaders, then we should definitely at least make an effort. And I figure with this much as a start, surely we can get that, that ball rolling. Hopefully you guys will help me stay accountable to do that. But I want to give a big shout out to Kelly Greenacres Farm. If you guys aren't following her, she is on multiple channels. You should absolutely um, do that. And I'll try to remember to include a link in the uh, description below. So, that's item number one on the mail call. Item number two. Super excited about this. When COVID was just about to hit the scenes, I uh, over two years ago, I was frantically searching everywhere that I could for um, this particular item. And then I managed to find this in seeds last year, but I was terrified with, I didn't have enough space and had too much stuff that I started. I was terrified to try to start this from seed because I've never known anyone to do it. So I am sharing with you today, also from our mail call, The elderberry growing and harvesting instructions provided by the vendor, which in this case is um, the Bob Gordon version of elderberry cuttings. They send you a pack of three and it came from River Hills Harvest. You can also find them on um, on YouTube and the other social channels. Um, I first discovered them um, with Off Grid with Doug and Stacy because um, they've worked with him for years and he comes and guest, does guest appearances on their channel where they um, do recipes and things like that. Um, every year, every year um, he goes and uh, trims their elderberry bushes by their chicken coop. It's really sweet and precious. But anyway, um, I saw that for less than 20 bucks, I could get three elderberry cuttings to hopefully, fingers crossed, look at these beautiful specimens, to hopefully get my own elderberry bushes started. Now, if you look really closely here, see there's little buds on there that with the moisture that's in this container, it's already starting to bud out. So I think I'm going to be able to put these in some dirt and then just put them in my seed starting area with my lights and my heat and see if I can't get these started for this year. Now obviously we won't get a yield off of them this year, but if we can at least get them going, that would be amazing. These look like really good cuttings. I'm super excited about, <clears throat> excuse me, about this. So two items on the mail call. I waited to open these until mail call. They came in at my husband. I was like, oh, you're going to be so excited, but we can't open them yet because we've got to do a mail call. Today. All right. So I've got instructions on both of those that I'm going to need to read through and um, familiarize myself. We actually went to my great aunt's house two years ago and we cut some but we didn't really know what we were doing. We just cut them in pieces. Um, and we planted them. I don't think it was the right kind of soil. I don't think it was the right kind of condition. Again, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, and none of them took. So we're going to try again. <laughs> because that's what you do with 
how I'm gonna it. All right, so another item which came in the mail, I've already taken it out of the package and I do apologize for that, is actually a book that was recommended. It's called The Four Season Farm Gardener's Cookbook. Now, guys, I don't know about you, but my grandmother started giving me cookbooks when I was a child. And by the time she passed away and I got the rest of her cookbook collection, I have a more a cookbook collection of books than most people have of just books at all. I have a lot of books. Um, <laughs> but I'm really excited about the specific book because my, my new husband, he has been learning about homesteading he's been learning about uh eating sustainably he's been learning all kinds of wonderful things that we all need to know right beautiful beautiful book and one of the things that he's been learning is how to eat seasonally and how to eat what's available in the garden and so instead of saying i'm going to eat this and this and this with the this week and then go to the grocery store with a list and purchase those things or just God forbid, walk randomly through the grocery store and buy random things. He now realizes that when we are planning our meals, if we will do it based on what's available in the garden or what we have preserved, um, that we can eat very, very healthily and um, be more sustainable in our efforts. So one of the reasons why I was particularly interested in this book is because it takes the food from, you know, the seed stage, which is where most of us are at right now, to, you know, to the table and to filling our, and filling our bellies. And so this book, I mean, it's just, look at this. It's absolutely just gorgeous, right? Um, it actually gives you a four-year rotation of tall crops it gives you a uh, mini rotation within single beds for your spring, your summer, and your fall so that you can keep greens going throughout the year. I mean, it, it, you could just set and, and go and go and go. Plan for an herb garden that, you know, there's just there's so many things. Everything from how to use, uh, how to do seed starts, starting out using seed blocks, right? All the way through to like last year what we did where we used the little cardboard containers that we made to start our sit some of our seedlings in um, watering systems how to convey things to the next generation um, let's see there was one picture in here and then the, of course part two is the kitchen Woo this is the best part um, I saw a picture in here and I wanted you guys to see it so much uh, the different tools that you can use, suggestions for those, spacing for how in a cold frame versus how to space in just a regular garden bed. And the best part is, is this is the journey of actual folks and they've just documented, you know, kept records and they make me feel so much less dorky like with all the stuff that I do. But look at this tomato sandwich. It looks like it's got a, a, an aioli of some sort on it and uh, multiple colored sliced tomatoes just eat your heart out and some beautiful homemade sourdough toast um, just it's just decadent and beautiful and there's all kinds of recipes for things that we actually grow in our gardens um, one of the challenges as you're going on your gardening journey or, or your homesteading journey is learning how to grow the things that do well where you live, number one, and two, learning how to grow the things that your family is actually going to eat. And that's where a lot of people get sidetracked. They get excited about, I want these different seeds. I want these different, try to, try to find these different varieties because it's so empowering once you start down this journey, once you start this road or this lifestyle, it's so empowering to go, oh, I can grow the things. So you want to grow everything. You want to try everything. And you tend to get easily distracted like squirrel style on the things that are just exciting and fun and pretty and cool. Now, I know some people have a shared philosophy with me and that is, 
you know, if I'm going to spend all the time and the energy and the effort and the money and everything to just grow my own food, to do it sustainably, to do it organically, um, to try to close the loop with, you know, making my own compost and, um, you know, feeding the soil so that the feed soil can feed the food, so the food can feed me, so that I can be healthy and strong, so that, and, and so it can also feed the animals, and so, you know, and together we all put that waste back into that same system. That whole kind of lifestyle and that concept, it's so empowering to people that are new to it, that it's easy to get distracted, and the next thing you know, you're growing all these things, and you have all these seeds, and you're doing all this stuff, but are you actually feeding your family? And so I love things like this that take and they incorporate all those different concepts in a tangible way, especially for younger people that are just learning about these, these elements of living. So I will get off my soapbox on that. I will also provide a link down below with where you can find this amazing, amazing book. It really is two books in one. It's a, a garden guide and a cookbook with over 120 recipes where you grow what you eat and you cook what you grow. So it's a nice, nice little book there. All right. I was going to do this one in its own video. You know what? I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm just going to give you a little hint, one little spoiler hint. I do have a couple of other reveals, one of them that has to do with seed starting and that I'm very excited to share about, yes, but I'm gonna wait because it really does justify its own, um, its own video. All right, so I'm gonna tell you about the conundrum of my day. If you live somewhere where you can grow tomatoes and you have a long growing season, then, and you have been doing your own gardening for very long, then you are probably a fan of tomatoes. Okay. Me personally, I'm very much a fan of tomatoes. My family has actually been having dreams uh, over the last few years of things in the world have just gotten more difficult, and more and more difficult. Th it's basically the gist of it is grow, grow tomatoes, grow all the tomatoes, grow all the things. And so um, I have been on a mission for the last couple of years to hone my tomato propagation, tomato growing and skills uh, so that I can garden as organically as possible but still have all the tomatoes. So I was about to, I was getting everything organized and I was about to start my seed starting for this year, right? I got my sweet potato slip started, I got my, um, growing station moved and my office rearranged and all my things where I wanted them and um, got enough heater set up to where I can hopefully keep the one room that has the seed starting station warm so that we can go ahead and get started with the seeds and get this, this, this show on the road because guys it's the middle of February which means it's time to get your peppers and your tomatoes and then anything else that needs eight weeks uh, or more to be ready to go in the garden. It's time to get those things started. Okay. So I was going to start on them. I was a woman on a mission. And after I went through my oodles and boodles and boodles and oodles of seeds, I realized that the things that I actually use the most and that I need the soonest are the ones that I do not in fact have. So the seed starting madness for spring 2022 continues. That being said, I went through my peppers and I went through my onions, or not my onions, my tomatoes, multiple times over the last 24 hours. And I try, I, I would make a list and then I would change my list and I would make another list and I would change my list. And so I got on YouTube and I pulled up in my gardener's seed starting video from last year and the one that he did in a two part <laughs> uh, this year. And um, I was like, okay, let's see which ones he's doing 
versus the ones I have empty seed packets for from last year versus the ones that I actually still have. And it's bad, guys. So, here's the thing. I have some really old Cherokee Purple seeds that are from Beyond Organic Seeds that are at least three years old. And I actually have quite a few of them, but they've been in a plastic bag for three years. I don't know if they're going to work, okay? But Cherokee Purples, hopefully I got that one covered. Last year, I ended up without one in my garden. I sold all the ones I had and was left with zero. Okay, so I have... Northrop King Seeds out of California. Um, this packet, it's literally, this packet is not something that I'm counting on it having a germination rate because it was packed for 1981. This package of seeds is almost as old as I am. Okay, if that were not enough, then I have this beautiful Fredonia Seeds seed packet that doesn't have a date on it, but the cost of the seed was $1.19, and it was for some type of a hybrid of tomato. And there's still seeds in there because they're coated. Better Boy. Better Boy is now stabilized, so this has to be a very old seed packet. Okay, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel, kids. <clears throat> Here I have found an old-fashioned Rutgers. A lot of the tomatoes that we're all growing, like anybody that's in the homesteading movement or that, you know, is a gardener that does starts their own seeds and does heirloom seeds, um, they when they talk about F1 hybrids, this is a seed or a variety of seed that has now been crossed with brandy wines and other types of seeds so many times that they're starting to stabilize so this is an old seed packet i don't know exactly how old seed was only a dollar 44 at like their store for this rutgers so we'll see early girl Every single place that you go to buy seeds, there's 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 still three seeds in here. Early girl, um, everywhere that you go to buy seeds, you can find early girl. And I haven't shopped at a Walmart in three years, and this is from a Walmart. I would again, it doesn't have a year on it, but if I had, oh yeah, wait wait wait, wait yes it does. This is from. 2008 13 months all right then I have uh, these little packies that have aroma seeds a lot of aroma seeds don't know even where they came from um, I have big boy hybrid again these are from 2008 there's yeah five six seeds in the bottom of that packet all right, so then the seeds that I started some of last year, okay, uh, from it in my gardener, I got a lot of big ones. Apparently, I didn't start a lot of big tomatoes last year. Who knew? Um, but I have the mortgage lifter. I have a few seeds of the mortgage lifter. I have the Genovese, which is one of these beautiful multicolored. I have the big rainbow tomato, which this one was actually really popular on the website. Um, and I think it might be sold out. There's just a few more seeds down in the bottom of that one. I have the Tiffin Mennonite, the black crim. So you guys can see that black from Tula. This one was, um, promoted last year and I think I got it in one of the end of season sales because it looks like all the seeds are still in there I don't think I actually planted any of those and then the black sea man tomato um, I did not plant any of these last year so I actually have quite a few of those chocolate stripe tomato triple crop 
it's um i sewed some of these last year ended up selling them all i didn't end up with any of my own in the garden but i have almost a whole package of those so we're definitely going to have those for this year i've got the german johnson tomato um this is one of the ones i was saying that's like a crossover from record right, right, anyway if you're not a tomato nerd it doesn't make any sense um i have a few more of the old german you guys can see that one the trophy tomato i don't really know anything about this one except it's got a really really long maturity so i'm not actually thinking that i'm going to have much luck with that but yeah we'll get it started and see what happens then i have just a couple seeds of aunt ruby's german now this one is one that i worked so hard to find last year it is from baker creek the seeds are so teeny 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 itty bitty tiny and i have quite a few of them so i hope to start quite a few and this one is dr witchies um this are witchy i this is one that all of my fellow arkansas growers are just in love with now i have this one i tried sewing a couple of them last year i didn't have any luck but this is my free seed in my order last year with baker creek and this is the white thomasol tomato i've never had a white tomato before so we're going to try that one as well now when i said oh my gosh i don't have any tomatoes you're probably listening and going well why what do you mean you don't have any tomatoes you just sat here and read off all the these are all very large tomatoes right so in your garden you always want to try to make sure if you're going to have food to put away you're going to have tomatoes that start yielding early and then stay late you want to have a selection of tomatoes and in this case i don't have any small to medium sized tomatoes whatsoever except for this Napa Chardonnay tomato, which I've never grown before. That's it. This is the only one that I have. So I went on, um, I went on in my gardener today and I went through meticulously and made sure that I didn't have any duplicates. I tried to find as many replacements for the ones that I sewed last year that I'm out of, which are, like I said, your small to mediums. Um, I did that with the peppers and the tomatoes and then my lettuces because those are the three things that I need right now so that I can start my sewing for the things that take the longest to get ready to put into the ground and those are the three things that I have the least amounts of well that and beetroot or root vegetables not beetroot but root vegetables so that being said I have put in an order it is supposed to be here within the week and so what I will probably end up doing is keep working on my planning and my lists as far as what I want to plant in what order I want to plant them there's a handful of things I can go ahead and start uh, getting the beds ready for to go ahead and start my late winter early spring <clears throat> if it doesn't storm next week there's a chance for a snowstorm next week um, I've made that list I've been going through all of my plants and putting okay this needs to be started one week two weeks three weeks four weeks five weeks whatever before the last frost and with those uh, trying to just get organized so I have a plan of attack since I do have limited space I do not have a greenhouse and um, we have a lot of stuff that we want to get planted as well as plants to have to take um, to the farmers market and to sell um, in our local community because the primary source for uh, seeds in this community tends to come right from the big box stores and there's a limited uh, variety M mostly uh, it's going to be just you know your boilerplate stuff so I like to be able to offer options for heirloom varieties my goal is to get to a place where actually I have a, a, a high tunnel greenhouse um, where I can propagate all of my seeds, have things that I grow out throughout the year so that we have food growing throughout the year, irregardless of what the weather is doing. Um, and 
last year or the year before, I would have told you that was a two year plan. Um, it's still a two year dream, but it's more like a five year plan now. So we'll see what happens. Um, I keep hearing rumors of um, opportunities where you can um, get involved with different programs and things of that nature. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, I haven't given up on that dream. It's just right now I'm trying to stick with the things that are attainable. And um, yeah. So now that I've told you my whole life story about everything that has to do with seeds, we've done a mail call video. Um, and I've shared with you some of the wonderful things that I've been able to uh, receive in the mail lately, I want to encourage every one of you, if you are uh, relatively new on your social media channels, if you're new to homesteading, you've just been doing it for a year or two, um, if you're new to YouTube, do yourself a favor and like like myself, okay, I have a network of people that I've been I've been working with and talking to and, it, and or doing business with for a couple of years now, right? So, and I'm, I've been really inconsistent about my posting and I only just came on the YouTube scene back last year and I only put in like a half a year's work before um, I let life get ahead of me. So I'm not the, uh, the best candidate or the best example of a YouTuber, but <clears throat> I have a lot of friends that are very successful YouTubers. And so what I would suggest that you do is when you find a channel that you are interested in, that you like, um, that you really care for the content and the people and you start getting invested in their story, go and see who their friends are. Follow their friends. They will follow you back. Folks such as myself that are new and don't have very many subscribers we will never be able to get to a place to where we can use YouTube as a tool to help grow our dreams and work towards the next step and for our content to be visible to help people out unless we help each other so on that note I try not to do a lot of shameless promotion but I would appreciate any likes shares comments um, and like I said, I will be linking these other items in the comments down below. Um, and I just procured a new video editing software that works with both phone, the computer, the um, cameras, all of that, uh, to try to find a way to uh, provide you with a little bit higher quality of content because my video editor changed jobs and I don't have anybody to do the cool transitions and edit out the things and and whatnot so um, I'm working on that I promise <laughs> you would think I would be better at it but normally I just you know capture the stuff I'm not the one that puts it all together <laughs> so anyway on that note I want to thank you guys for joining me in my study today um, we've made a lot of progress in the last few days towards at least getting the spring seed starting madness underway. Um, and my goal is tomorrow, fingers crossed, if everything goes according to plan, to go ahead and start um, my first seed starts. So wish me luck and tell me what you guys are planting. I can't wait to hear what my friends and folks that, you know, I mess with on here, what it is that you guys are up to. So we've got a whole new spring season that's starting any moment now, and we're in this together. So after this very long spiel about everything and anything, again, I thank you so much for joining us on our journey, and please stay safe and be blessed. Until next time.